So let's start with the first one. What are the plans of operation and maintenance after completion of construction? So we are talking about sometimes in near next eight, nine years. Is anybody of you ready to answer? Artus, please. Uh, hello. Uh, regarding operation and maintenance, uh, I would say that uh, this question is, uh, let's say, more related to the next forum. Currently, as you uh, have seen from the presentations, uh, we are undergoing the operational plan study, and the results of the study will be available next year. Uh, however, on the, uh, let's say, on the main principles, uh, uh, we have mixed traffic line, so it means uh, uh, railway operations will consider both passenger services and freight services. And uh, for the freight services, we have at least three uh, interfaces. This is Muga Terminal, Salaspils Terminal, and Kaunas Terminal in uh, three countries. For the passenger services, we mainly aim for the international services. So all the complexity uh, regarding the train, uh, train services, train operations, uh, uh, will be delivered by this study, as I mentioned, uh, uh, to be completed end of this year. Thank you. Now let's go to the next question. Perhaps uh, Kaspers can take uh, it. Considering recent claims and court cases in many tenders in the Baltics, how do you plan to manage risks of claims which could severely delay or even stop the project? Right. Uh, oh, here is a mic. Uh, I think, right, uh, the statistics you just uh, saw it are in our favor. And we, uh, during the last year, we had experienced only three claims. Uh, and only one, in one case, the claim uh, was uh, kind of uh, approved. Uh, statistically, it's, it gives a very good uh, uh, feedback. There is a problem, uh, I think I will touch upon other questions as well. There is a problem of uh, untrust, how the procurement processes are run in, in Latvia, in Baltics in general, how transparent processes are, and how the suppliers are, are chosen. So for us is, I, th I think, the following. We take our time to prepare the tender and, and to, to assemble the components of the procurement. But then we are absolutely clear, or we are 99% clear, that this is a clear document, understandable, and most probably there won't be a claim. So I think we put an effort in preparing the document without a rush or haste, and, and then we have, I think, mitigated uh, part of the issue r from right to beginning. Okay, thank you. But probably the, the court cases are inevitable also at, the, at some point of time for large projects, and uh, this is actually the reality of life. Now, the next one, perhaps Arenius, if, if I could ask you, as, as coming from Lithuania and, and the largest national railway company in, involved in our project, how do you, or, or how do you see across the Rail Baltic project, how to avoid corruption and interest groups taking away Rail Baltic project money and prolonging the building process or even stopping the construction at all? I mean, are you, do you have any suggestions from, from LG side, or how do you run procurement processes to, to avoid these issues? Uh, thank you for the question. <clears throat> Actually, it is uh, an effort uh, should be paid by the contracting authority and for the suppliers as well. I think it's uh, the common aim to have a contract signed and projects implemented. I think that uh, a good news here is that um, uh, procurement uh, rules uh, and standards will be the same in uh, all three countries. It will be coordinated, prepared by uh, Arborail, agreed, and uh, the principles will be the same. And uh, I think it's, uh, it will be some kind of measure to assure uh, the transparent procurements and to receive uh, uh, good results and, and to avoid such situations. Uh, what we are doing in uh, Lithuania, uh, we are doing consultations uh, with uh, the market before announcing a tender. We are trying to discuss with the possible uh, suppliers uh, openly what they see, uh, problems, problematic issues, uh, maybe which can limit uh, um, the possibility to participate uh, in the tenders and uh, are eliminating this uh, 
these uh, places from the procurement uh, documents. So I think it's um, a, main, uh, a main, perhaps, measure to speak uh, with suppliers, as we are doing uh, today, and, uh, and try to avoid um, such spaces in the procurement documentation, which could create such kind of, uh, of um, situations. And I really believe that uh, we are on good track and uh, we will have uh, really qualitative procurement uh, documents in one standard, and, and this will be managed in such situations. Thank you. Is that something similar that you would see, Kasper, also uh, here in, in, in RB Rail in context as well? Transparency, involvement of the market, consultations, anything else? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think I have uh, nothing more to add. I think you were very explicit, and I think I would just contribute that the same applies for Latvia. Okay. Uh, as our colleague Christian mentioned, that we need to establish best practices ourselves as well and try to develop them. Now, the next question is the legal one, perhaps for me to take. Which procurement law will apply to procurements done by RB Rail outside of Latvia? And the short answer is that we can use the Latvian law because RB Rail is the company coming from Latvia, but we could also apply uh, for our branch uh, procurements, uh, local laws, and then we will decide on case-by-case -case basis. Now, the next one, they, will the company be allowed to participate in construction work standard if that company or its specialists have provided design services for the same object? So, let, we can jump over the, the next session where we will discuss design services, but, but Artos, perhaps you can comment on, on that, or, or is there anybody willing to take? I mean, can you... First of all, that we have separated design and construction phases, and it would we uh, allow the same suppliers to be there? Uh, I would uh, uh, answer this uh, uh, currently in a very general uh, way. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, avoiding conflicts and of interest, and uh, as well uh, uh, looking how to uh, implement uh, all the like design works and construction works phase efficiently. So uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, 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 this question is uh, uh, to be uh, uh, considered by each of, of the procurements. Uh, there, there is uh, uh, mostly like uh, the main answer would be. Uh, 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 no, the designer has to be uh, uh, separately in order to, to be able to supervise the design services because the design services was, will as well uh, contain uh, the task to uh, go for design supervision. So uh, I would say the first rule is uh, no conflict of interest. So that's what we are trying to avoid to, uh, and to manage these conflict of interest issues to make sure that the process is uh, prudent and, and legal. And on that note, maybe I could uh, ask uh, also uh, Kaspers Bishkens to, to, to jump in. I mean, how do you get more competition into our procurements? What do you do as business development person? Uh, how to encourage uh, suppliers to come to ensure better procurements and, and better innovations, better results for the whole project? Right. Th thank you. Uh, well, g given the kind of the dual mandate to business development at this point of development of the project, where you have on the one hand the long-term vision of commercializing uh, Rail Baltica and thereby engaging with the potential future users, that's one work stream. The other work stream, more relevant uh, to, to, to the question you posed, is building relationships with the supplier community, uh, making sure that Rail Baltica project is visible amongst the international supplier community, making sure that our suppliers have enough information on the ongoing tenders, on the specificities of the project. For that reason, as, as Kasper has uh, already mentioned during his presentation, we are trying to expose ourselves as much as possible in the different fora uh, of where our industry meets, again, both on the future user side, but in particular at this stage uh, with the supplier community. For that reason, uh, last year we were at two major fairs in Poland and, and, and Sweden covering the Nordics. This year we will be in Spain, we will be in the UK, of course we will be at uh, Inotrans where uh, many of you will be present. And one of the primary aims of our presence in these major events 
is, again, liaising with the supplier community with the ultimate aim of making sure that we have uh, a large number of participation in our tenders. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe I would then jump to the question number three for you as well. Any suggestion for companies that not come from the EU countries to join Rail Baltica project? And, and I recall yesterday there was also a statistic showing that there is a part of Baltic supplier community who are providing services and, and goods for Rail Baltica project. And there is also a really large amount of international suppliers already in place. So, outside the EU, what would you suggest for suppliers from there? Well, let's say that, that within the confines of the EU procurement legislation, there is no discrimination when it comes to ability of any international company to participate in their tenders. As long as they can comply with the European standards, and oftentimes uh, international non-European companies do that through their uh, European subsidiaries or affiliates mm -hmm. in the European Union, uh, not that we have had a lot of exposure with non-European companies, but certainly there's a way for international companies, Asian companies, for example, which have strong presence in the international railway supply industry, uh, to engage uh, in uh, Rail Baltica tenders. Okay, thank you, Kaspers. Now, uh, if, if I could ask uh, Kaspers Rockens, um, in our project, we have set up uh, some general standards for the suppliers. And uh, the next question is probably related to that as well. Did you uh, or have you have envisaged in tenders uh, to favor companies that are sustainable and that respect the requirements of the circular economy? I'm not sure what I know this term, but uh, maybe you could explain as well. But the idea of sustainability, how do you check from supplier's position and, and, and uh, where, how do you work on that? Yeah, we haven't addressed that topic uh, in, in the depth or, or in the detail yet. And I think we are going to address it in the near future, in particular when the construction works will start. Uh, one way of perceiving uh, the sustainability issue it is, it is that it will ultimately drive the cost slightly, but still to drive the cost up for, uh, for the offer, for the bid. Uh, we are not afraid of that per se. However, we have to be prudent in estimating to what extent that the cost of, uh, of offer may uh, increase. And again, this is for our own sake, for next generations, that the companies which address the work uh, in a sustainable way have a, an upper hand, so to say, in, in, in equal parity. But in the future, as I said, for the during the construction processes, I think it's, it's rather clear that we should be giving a preference to the uh, uh, contracting company who has the biodegradable oil rather than the oil which can be dumped somewhere and or the practice of the businesses that they are dumping oil somewhere absolutely carelessly. So I think we will come up with the solutions. Thank you. Uh, now, Anwar, if, if I could ask you uh, slightly rewarding the, the second question. Um, Will other e-procurement environments, for example, Estonian, be used in centralized procurements? I would rephrase it a little bit. Uh, the, the next one question from me would be, are you satisfied generally with e-procurement environment across Estonia as being one of the leaders in e-procurement? And, and uh, are there any lessons apart from the ones that our colleagues already mentioned uh, how to work with e-procurement environment? Thank you. Actually, yes, I'm personally satisfied with the uh, with the procurement. Uh, uh, what concerns that particular question? Uh, yes, theoretically, those centralized or joint procurements uh, could be uh, also done via the e-procurement register, but it should be decided uh, internally beforehand. But yes, as I have been in both sides, you know, on the market side uh, also, uh, I would say that the e-procurement is uh, a very good uh, procedure. Uh, so yes, I would encourage to use it. And I think that what we have seen also from, from RB Rail side in, in Riga, that it takes time a little bit to learn how to work with that. Of course, it is a little bit difficult for 
foreign companies, as the first versions are in local languages, but this is process uh, of learning and, and, and applying and, and improving the also generally e-procurement environment, which is uh, helping for, for everybody. Now, um, my apologies, I haven't asked all of the audience directly, do you have any questions apart from Slido questions? No hands. Okay, let's finish with a uh, few more questions uh, uh, from Slido. And uh, the same gentleman, I'm sure, will be available for answers out throughout the day. Now, the next one, have you foreseen any process to include the companies with innovative products for which the procurement technical specif specifications are not available yet? So. Uh, let me try to answer. Um, once in uh, August or September, engaging with uh, Finnish uh, Business Association, uh, I asked the straightforward question, what you would suggest us to do in order to bring the innovations in uh, RB Rail? And the answer was uh, pretty shocking, but straightforward. Why don't you run uh, an innovation procurement? And I said, well, uh, challenging enough to make a specification on. He said, you don't need a specification. Just Take a piece of the uh, uh, A4 format sheet and, and say the best innovation suggestion and run it like that. And then evaluate subjectively what's the best innovation. So Finns are ready uh, for such a liberty on the procurements. Uh, I think we are not. But somewhere in, the, in between we will have to meet one way or another in order to incorporate innovations. Although uh, rail are, uh, railways are kind of restricted environments, less restricted environments as an air traffic, uh, we have to test the innovations or just to be sure that the safety and, and, and security aspects are considered. But innovations are warmly welcome for the uh, Rail Baltica. Um, and the final one, I would like to take the second one and, and perhaps uh, each of you can, can jump in with, with the notes or uh, comments. Is there or should there be a preferred mode of procurement in the project like Rail Baltica? Is there one right solution nowadays in the project and maybe elsewhere? I mean, we can start with Artus and Arrhenius. Uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, each uh, uh, procurement is a little bit different. So uh, I would say that there, there is no just one uh, single uh, solution. So there might be variety of the uh, models how to procure. Uh, the aim is to do this uh, uh, with uh, the least administrative burden and uh, to do it uh, to meet the, all the best requirements and to have the mm -hmm. high quality delivery. Thank you, Artus. Arenis? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I really agree uh, with my colleague that um, every procurement uh, and aim of the procurement may differ. And uh, each type of the procurement has its uh, positive and, and negative um, effects. Uh, earlier, we used uh, more uh, the red FIDIC uh, when we announced uh, a tenders according uh, completed the technical, technical design. And uh, of course, this uh, mode of procurement, perhaps it is more clear for the suppliers. Everything it is designed, everything it is clear, what it is necessary to construct. But uh, this mode is uh, more closed for possibilities to suggest some innovations, some maybe know-how, some maybe better solutions. And uh, if to use uh, yellow FIDIC or, or to design and uh, construct uh, phase, um, it, um, it will have benef benefits that we can expect a, a better and more innovative uh, uh, solutions. So perhaps it is no uh, so different uh, which one is more preferred, but uh, perhaps the most uh, preferred uh, mode of procurement is to allow uh, for the suppliers to suggest the very best uh, bits with uh, the best solutions, most innovative solutions and how to reach it or to the uh, negotiations procedure, yellow or red FIDIC, I think uh, it will be developed and, and decision will be taken. Okay. Anwar? 
Totally agree with my colleagues. Uh, uh, just one suggestion for the team. Let's actually decrease the administrative burden. Okay, that's a good suggestion. From the experience that I have with, uh, have had primarily with study type of activities, one is to have a, a very structured terms of reference, preferably you know, broken down into work packages, and then an evaluation matrix that reflects the contractor's or the tenderer's ability uh, to expand on mm -hmm. what's requested in, in the working packages. That's one, one suggestion uh, that we have also consistently been using. Uh, also, uh, publishing the indicative contract value so mm -hmm. that at least the tenderers see what is the target range for their financial proposals, and at the same time not giving too much proportion to the financial proposal so that the ultimate competition is based on merits of the technical proposal. And sometimes, uh, and that's also maybe, maybe a third fla important flank, is that we have very explicit and in our case relatively high uh, qualifications for the experts mm -hmm. and possibly even some additional points for the expert teams for particular merits. And we have done, done that uh, in the past uh, on a few studies and that seems to be working. It seems to be delivering top quality at the rate, the financial rate that is available to us through the way how CEF finances, uh, grant finances our, our activities. So value for money idea exactly. and, and not only cheapest not uh, cheapest bidder to, to, to win. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, continuing right from what you said, in a study uh, and, and, and design phase, I think the procurements are aiming to optimize uh, the, the cost and, and the substance with, uh, with a ratio of 30, 40 percent to the cost of, of the offer. Uh, going towards the construction procurements, uh, I think the ultimate uh, goal or example uh, could, we could take is from uh, experience of Australia, New Zealand and our neighbors in Finland where uh, the alliances are built. This is competitive negotiation process with the suppliers. And, and then the alliance is built with the ultimate winner aiming to really give a burst for the innovations uh, and, and do things differently at the same time reducing uh, the cost for, uh, for the project. Okay. Many thanks for you audience asking the questions. Many thanks for the panelists. Let's give a warm round of applause.